Okay, we're going to do a short wrap and a couple of logistic points. We want to actually start out. Uh, first, I want to say, uh, before I forget this, that there's some packets on the table from uh, UNLV. It's about the impact the school has on the economy. If you run out of them on the table, they're on the uh, tables outside as well if you can't get one off of the tables in here. Uh, and we want to start out with the thank yous because we don't want to leave that to the very, very end. Uh, well, thank you first. Anyone still in this room, thank you for staying. This was a long march through a lot of data. Give yourselves a hand. And all the panelists, thank you. Uh, the conveners, the lieutenant governor, the assembly leader, the Senate majority leader, thank you. This was an important conference. We appreciate your support in these efforts and the leadership you've shown. To the university leadership, Dan Claych, Milt Glick, and Neil Smastrick, thank you. Uh, there was a conference planning team, and I, we were on these 7 a.m. calls in the morning. Uh, Nancy Flagg, who's been thanked already, thank you again, Nancy and Jerry. Thank you so much. Uh, they were the chief stewards of these calls, the ones that really made this happen. We had to do this fast, folks. We had to do this in almost real time, and we appreciate their efforts. And then the conference planning committee, in addition, Steve Hill, John Ritter, Terry Murphy, Maureen Peckman, uh, Mark Fiorentino, uh, Becky Bolton, Lucy Klinkhammer, and Bill Brown. Thank you all. And I think we're going to show on the screen this wouldn't be possible without some financial support. We reached out to a number of organizations to help us fund this. It, uh, it wasn't a terribly expensive program, but it wasn't free. And uh, we would like to thank some of the people who I hope they'll show up on our screen graphics with their sponsor logos. Among them, Boyd Gaming, the Council for a Better Nevada, the Desert Research Institute. Thank you, thank you Steve. Uh, Focus Property Group, uh, Forest City, the Nevada Community Foundation, the Nevada Institute for Renewable Energy Commercialization, NIREC, the Nevada System for Higher Education, Dan Claych already mentioned, NV Energy, thank you Michael and your colleagues at NV Energy, the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority, Chris Bart and her colleagues there, the Sierra, Ang Sierra Angels, uh, Bob Goss, uh, Stations Casinos, the Peckman Company, the University of Nevada, Reno, thank you, Milt Glick, and our host institution, UNLV. So we're going to give some final wrap thoughts, some comments, and a couple of points I think we need to follow up on. And then what we're going to do is quickly turn to the audience. The mics are available. And we'll take any suggestions you have by way of institutional follow-up. Uh, and let me say, you know, we have these folks that we've been had presented here in our Rolodex. Uh, they are available to consult us, as a matter of fact, uh, specifically on the implementation of the programs they've suggested. So if we want guidance on, say, USTAR, we actually have access to the speaker today, uh, and he can actually help guide us in the, in the direction of, you know, bootstrapping this, going through the process with the legislature, going through the process of developing the network in the business community. I had a couple of last comments, just as final wrap on the day. I want it noted earlier on that in Denver, this is important, uh, Tom Clark said when they were in the deep recession, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. We have 100,000 unemployed construction workers. It's the largest category of our unemployment. If it were not for those unemployed construction workers, we would have high unemployment, certainly. But we wouldn't have the country's highest unemployment. They're the sector the least likely to come back anytime soon without public investment. We have big projects we need. We're the only place without an interstate to the next nearby big city between Phoenix and Las Vegas. We have high-speed rail we can build. We have extra water projects we can do. So we have a lot of things we can do in the short haul in that employment category. Uh, the other thing is that, and I think Dallas indicated this, we have our international terminal of our airport opening in 2012. And there was a long time that I think there was a sense in this community that that airport was exclusively for the purpose of tourism. And anybody who got in the way of that trade was really damaging the city's economic prospects. I think there's a bigger picture now in this region, and that that airport could be a Dallas airport or an Atlanta airport. 
And I propose that when we have that opening, in other words, we're about to open this airport, and it comes with all kinds of benefits. You get extra custom officials. We have an airport in Los Angeles that doesn't want the trade. It literally is overwhelmed by air cargo, and would love to spill some of that into the Las Vegas airport, as a matter of fact. And there was a concern, again, we were going to reach our capacity in this airport by 2017. We had plans for a spillover airport. The reality is we're not going to get there. The reality is that instead that we have this capacity for some of these other alternative uses of the airport. And they didn't go into it, but air cargo was one of the key ingredients that helped build Dallas and Atlanta, as a matter of fact. And so we need to sit down ahead of that airport opening, bring all the airport authorities in, bring Atlanta and Dallas in, and experts in know how to leverage airports and have that discussion because that's low-hanging fruit, folks. We have this capacity. You heard Dallas impressed with our airport, and they should know. They built an entire metropolis off an airport. So I think as just next steps, we have infrastructure coming online. We have airport, an airport opening. We have certain things that are almost cooked into the system. And what we have to do is start immediately the planning phase for the full implementation of that capacity, the full use, utilization, I should say, of that capacity in the regional economy. And I, as just a final comment, and I'm going to turn this to Phil, as far as, as next steps, Brookings Institution is a, a resource, and think of us that way, as available. To the extent that we could provide data, that we could provide contacts, we're there. And uh, we have national contacts, but we also have regional contacts. The, what you saw on display today is that the Brookings Mountain West is a regional partnership by our peer regions in places like Denver and Phoenix and Salt Lake, and we're constantly in these spaces. We did the, uh, the actual study on budget, for example, in partnership with the Morrison Institute at ASU. So we are a resource with national connectivity, but we're also a resource in the sense that any of this comparative information that you need out of these other cities, and we have more folks in these cities that we have contact with that are working on these issues as well, certainly tap us for that, for that purpose. That's what we're here for. Thanks. Uh, first off, my final thank you. Uh, I, I really would like to uh, thank Rob Lang and recognize him um, for the yeoman's job that he did in helping us pull off this conference. Um, he went out to all of these speakers. He, he was in Utah a week ago at 10 Below. Um, he was in Dallas. He was in Denver. He was in Washington, D.C. Um, he made sure these speakers were prepared, that they had their materials, that they understood the goals that we were trying to achieve. And Rob, I'm very grateful. All of us are very grateful for what you've achieved there, and it's been terrific. So I, I have just one short comment and then uh, perhaps something, if I could have your indulgence at the end, just some tongue-in-cheek comments, but uh, I'll get to those. Um, the one thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is that one of the uh, things that influenced me most in, during my business career was a book I read once that talked about how companies that are in significant transitions, where the industry is moving from one state to uh, a global or changing from um, a, a manual system to a very sophisticated digital system, or there's lots of new competition. You name the circumstances. When you're faced with that, you've got to deal with two things, I think. You've got to deal with the core that has gotten you where you are. And that core for Nevada is the hospitality industry and the uh, hosting industry, as it was referred to, our convention industry, and it's the mining industry. And it's helped this state from Elko and Winnemucca to Reno uh, to Tonopah to Las Vegas and Laughlin. And we've lost a tremendous number of jobs in that sector. But, and, and I think this touches on something that Senator Horsford said, in the short term, the fastest way to get people reemployed is to have those industries become healthier. We can't abandon those industries. No one has suggested that. But we must preserve that core. We must make sure that that, that core industries that have brought us to where we are today are preserved, remain healthy, and are a part of our economy in the long term. But the trick for management and the trick for us today is what's outside that core. And we have to stimulate progress. Our job as leaders at the state level, 
Our job as leaders, as business leaders, our job in NGOs and in education is to stimulate progress. And we all know, and we all said it today, that we've taken this economy for granted. But we don't have to take it for granted anymore. We now know where we are. We're not in denial, although I'll get to that in a minute. Um, we have to stimulate progress. That's our job. Pay attention to that. And all of the things, what Glenn talked about at the NDA, those are great ideas, great initiatives, a plan for stimulating progress. We have the same thing from the Vision Stakeholders Group, from the new Nevada Task Force that Brian has convened. We've convened a lot of stimulators. Let's bring it together and get some action and some execution. So now, if you'll forgive me for the tongue-in-cheek part, because I fancy myself as a decider, and I thought we had a lot of uh, suggestions today on uh, to just do it. So I want to react to what I heard today. We look a lot like Denver in 1985, and we know how significantly re they reacted to the conditions that they were faced with there. And there's only one thing missing in Las Vegas to move us, smog. We need to import some smog and get this city moving. <laughs> we have Arizona's real estate challenges, and I was just uh, stunned by the description of, of that innovation center using uh, an abandoned shopping center, so I'm proposing the Fountain Blue Innovation Center. <laughs> we want our airport to look like the Dallas Fort Worth Airport. And we heard from Mike how that community came together on a regional basis. So I'm proposing in the next legislative session a gigantic airport in Tonopah, Nevada called the Lorena Vega International. And finally, I guess this is all that funny for many people here, but <laughs> uh, I think it's obvious, and this is a pretty serious uh, remark, that we look a lot like Utah um, in the size of the state, the geography of the state, of the uh, the uh, higher education institutions, the population of the state. And when we heard uh, from uh, Ted, uh, we really think we can do a lot of the things that they did in Utah. So my decision for Nevada is hire Ted McAleer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, now all, all we're going to do is take a few suggestions from the audience, and then that's it. That's a wrap, folks. So don't stare at people who stand up and say, sit down, because I want to get out of here. I know how that works. Some back there, a couple of suggestions. Yes. I just was hoping that some of the wonderful presentations might be available afterwards, perhaps on a website somewhere you could direct us to. They are. They're on a website, which is nv 20unlvedu .unlv and we'll post them in a day or two. Uh, right now, there's a $1.5 billion uh, coming down from President Obama to uh, initiate uh, some, some, some growth in uh, loans. We need to make sure that the banks, when they get that money, that the banks do not put unfair underwriting guidelines that will not allow the businesses to grow because the banks have a net growth right now of about 14% net reserves. And if they put underwriting guidelines there with that don't allow me as a business owner to come and get money, that would be unfair. So we need to make sure we push our banks to... Uh, give money out. Number two is that um, we have no deal flow. So Bob and I were talking from Sierra uh, Capital. If we have any successes at all this year, whether it be uh, venture capital, seed capital, large capital, we need to make sure that is publicized because that would be the stimulus to tell the community that we are moving forward. Otherwise, we'll be in our silos and we'll never hear of the successes. Any more suggestions out there? If not, then it's a wrap. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed the conference.